This is Dave. Another cup of tea. Hello. This is Phil. And introducing Stephen Seagull. And by day to pay the bills. I'm a welder and fabricator working out of my own workshop in Devon. I'm an instructor in the private security sector. I specialise in physical intervention and restraint. But at the weekend, with minimal experience and equipment, they are following their passion to become treasure divers. What are you thinking, Phil? I think she's in there. I've got this feeling about it, Dave. Yeah? I mean, we don't know where Lazy Cove is. We just found a little cove, which apparently has no name. I don't know. We'll have to check the chart when we get back. It's in the right area. And um, <clears throat> if you were in um, a storm back in 1708, December the 3rd or wherever it was, there was a real nasty storm. Navigation's impossible. And back, in the, back in those days, we wouldn't have had anything like what we've got now. So he was probably hugging the coastline to see if he could find a waypoint, help him out. Some shelter, maybe. And maybe Deep some shelter. Anchorage. Yeah. So he could sort of weather the storm for the night or whatever they decided to do. And this area is just treacherous. I mean, if you didn't know what you were doing around here. I mean, today it's beautiful, isn't it? It's like a mill it's pond. Calm, but it's absolutely lush, but and you wouldn't believe yesterday it was snowing here. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, the, the weather turns. This, this, these rocks and everything, um, and they pop up in the least expected places. I mean, it sounds ridiculous, but if you go any coastline, you'll see that. But this is particularly rocky. It's interesting. You know, I know we're in the right spot, and something's telling me. I just feel like confident about this spot. So it's definitely worth doing some diving over here, I reckon, first. Um, that's where we'll maybe do a few shore dives off Talon and see how, you know, checking out our gear and us and whatever else. But And once we get the boat, of course, we can go deeper. We can go deeper, and we're coming over here on the slack, so we can we're not get out. pushed into these rocks. Yeah, we can get out there. And we'll get just the other side of those rocks, in between those two, and in that little area there with the boat. I think we'll find something. <clears throat> There's a big boat, Dave, with 30 cannon on board. Yeah, yeah, um, six, uh, 600 ton, I think. 600 tons. I mean, you know, wooden hull, wooden ship. Galleon with 100 crew. We're not going to find much in the way of timber work left I would imagine not but um, what will we find well there were lots and bits and pieces made from steel that was you know that held the ship together so we might find iron even yeah iron yeah so as well. um, and brass and copper brass copper anything I mean just imagine it I mean and porcelain plates yeah people they you know they had, they had proper plates nut knives forks and all that stuff pewter pewter it's, it's, there's going to be an endless if it's not been plundered already there's going to be tons of historical articles still there in the, the seabed 300 years yeah it could be covered in a layer of silt a good storm blows that away so yeah. you know we've heard from someone today they said one particular coastline up the coast a little bit further speaking to the coast guard weren't it was we a coast guard yeah he said one day you can be looking at it and it's a sandy beach have a storm the following day it's rocks so it lifts, lifts, lifts all that sand away. It lifts it all away. And then they find World II, World II stuff that was left there. Munitions from and the stuff, war. Yeah. yeah. So um, every day is going to feel different. When we go diving, it will look different. Um, you know, you could dive this spot 50 times and you'd still see new stuff and you would... You'd, so we need a metal detector, don't we? We definitely need metal detecting gear, Dave. Definitely. That, uh, that's yeah, almost a must. I don't think we can do it without. Especially if we're... Lo- Especially if our target's going to be 30 cannon. Yeah. That's going to be a good yeah. metal metal and, target. And at the end of the day, I mean, the cannons, that would be amazing to find some cannons. Yeah. But it also would let us give us a massive clues to where that boat went down, because obviously they're not going to go very far. So that yeah. would be where the, at the point where she went down. Um, I just feel good about this little cove. Uh, this walk's been really interesting, actually. Yeah, it's To be worth able to actually it. see it from this point of view. Yeah, it's well worth doing, wasn't it? Yeah. So this is the coast path, and in the UK we have a path like this going, I think, just about all around the coastline of the so, UK. Yeah. It's, you know, hundreds of miles. 
absolutely fantastic opportunity for people to get out walking and uh, and to see this this fantastic rugged coastline that we have in the UK. Yeah, it's amazing. It's beautiful. A good takeaway. Well today, Phil, we are off to Birmingham to Erectons, which is a world famous um, metal detector suppliers. And uh, we're popping up there, they're going to show us some metal detectors because we are in the market for a metal detector. Today, the weather's terrible and we knew it was going to be in advance. The weather forecast was absolutely right. It wasn't really conducive to good diving, visibility would have been rubbish, sea conditions aren't good. We took advantage of that and as Dave said, we're going to go up to Regton and uh, nice people up there are going to demonstrate some metal detecting equipment. We need, we need something like that um, since we reckon that a lot of the metal artefacts are going to be buried under some Dave. Yes! <laughs> oh! And it's stopped be... raining. It has, everyone. Look. Anyway, are we nearly there yet? Yes. I don't believe you. Are we nearly there yet, Dave? Yeah. <clears throat> so we're nearly there then? Yeah. Good. I don't know how many hours we've been on the road. We're stuck in, not stuck in traffic. We're probably moving at about 10, 10 miles an hour average. Are we nearly there yet, Dave? Yeah, we're nearly there. We're nearly there. Dave? Yeah. Did um, you remember to bring the thermos flask with some coffee? No, I didn't want it. Didn't need it. He says he, he didn't really need it, but he forgot it. No coffee for us. We're nearly there then, Dave? Yeah. Nearly there. Nearly there. Yes, nearly. Really. <laughs> are we nearly there yet? We are nearly. We are actually nearly there! Dave? Yes. Are you in a bus lane? No. Okay, fair days. This is um, Birmingham, everybody. There's a building over there, looks like it was made um, in Minecraft. Right, so we're at Regden yeah. in Birmingham. Right, okay. And this is a major metal detector dealership. Oh, brilliant. Hi, I'm Dave. Hi, Hi I'm Dave. Hi. Hello. Hello. Hello there. <laughs> nice now, what, to meet you. Where from, nice to meet we're you. from treasuredivers.co.uk. Welcome, Rector Limited, Birmingham. Excellent. Thank you very much. So, how long have you been here, Nigel? Uh, been here since 1918. Okay. So, uh, we're getting the hang of it slowly. Yeah, and you seem to be a major dealer for all yeah, these we're, well known we're, makes. we're distributors and we're also dealers. Um, we handle most of the major manufacturers, the decent manufacturers. They're all here, yeah. Do you do uh, warranty repairs here? We do, we do the whole lot. We do warranty repairs, we do in and out of warranty repairs, we do servicing. We look after all aspects of metal detecting. Training? Training. We wow. do the whole lot. Books, accessories, yep. trowels, scoops. Fantastic. We're also online, www.regton.com. Before we start, there are, there are two basic technologies involved with metal detectors. You've got VLFTR, which have the ability to discriminate or reject certain items. Typically, that will be small ferrous objects only. Then you have pulse induction principle of operation, which is a different type of metal detector altogether. The downside with those is they have no discrimination. So you will pick up absolutely everything, all metals. This is a typical yeah. pulse induction machine. Control wise, fairly similar. You have a few controls. You'll have a sensitivity control, you'll have an on off control, and you'll have maybe a discrimination control. And typically you would use this using no discrimination. Now, depending on what you're looking for, whether it's ferrous or non-ferrous. If you set the machine, for example, any discriminating detector to pick up only non-ferrous, what would happen if your gold or silver right. or whatever you're looking for is in a wooden box with steel straps around it? Okay. You're now going to pick up those steel straps, you're going to get an indication of ferrous, you don't dig for the wrong right. reasons, you've walked away from your gold. So again, so to be don't fair, discriminate. I think when we hear a beep through those headphones, we're going to be digging. Yep, We're that wise. excited about. It's going to be something. Maybe it's of interest. We Dig everything. You know, yeah. Yeah, yeah I think that. So coming back to, to the, the argument for VLFTR versus PI, PI. Right. It doesn't have the effect from the salt water. 
is going to give you best performance, especially on rings and things like that. Uh -huh. Anything that's a closed circuit, yeah. you're playing with magnetic fields. Pulse induction machines love anything that's a ah, closed circuit. Right. So a ring in particular uh -huh. will give you a very, very good performance. Oh, okay. Better than a VLFTR machine. Right, that's I think we've worked so hard to get to the dive spot. If we find anything, we're going to be digging it up and getting excited about it. Yeah. And if it happens that it's nothing to do with the album, well, well we've taken so some rubbish out of the sea and Absolutely. we're happy with that, right? Well, just the, well Garrett, this is the, this is the Garrett Sea Hunter Mark II. Um, uh, as you may have gathered, it's the second version of their Sea Hunter. Uh, the original Sea Hunter I used to use many, many years ago and subsequently moved on to this unit. Um, Garrett as a company have been around for, I think they just about to have their 53rd anniversary. So they've been around a long, long time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly, it's good. Has a few other advantages. This is, this is unusual for underwater machines. You can remove the headphones. So you have a removable jack plug here. Okay. And you have a removable jack plug for the coil. Right. They're nice and robust, these are epoxy filled coils, uh -huh. which most of the, the, the underwater machines have anyway. So nothing can leak because they're solid, mm -hmm. there's nowhere for water to go. So they're right. not foam filled coils, you get, a, you get a, uh, uh, any damage, it'll go into the closed cell foam right. and eventually it works its way through to where it shouldn't be. Okay. These are epoxy filled, it has nowhere to go to, mm -hmm. it can't get it. Yeah, brilliant. And also negative buoyancy. <coughs> yes. Foam yeah, of course helps. being positive buoyancy <laughs> is not good with the coil. Yeah. Um, so, um, VLFTR machines, you can expect to pay anything from probably 900 to 1500 pounds, ballpark figure. Mm -hmm. uh, PI machines, again, this isn't the only one, although this is one of the better ones. Mm. Um, they're around about the 700 pound right. mark at the moment. Right. Yeah, you might find a little bit cheaper online, but um, yeah. Come to a reputable dealer like yourself. Come to a reputable dealer. If you find it cheaper elsewhere, speak to those reputable dealers, mm. talk to them say, look, I found it cheaper right. elsewhere, is there anything you can do on this? Mm -hmm. They're businessmen, at the end of the day, they're going to, they're going to be flexible. Yeah. You know, they may advertise one price, talk to them, yeah. they're human beings. Yeah, yeah, good, yeah. good advice. Yeah. Nigel, it's been a pleasure, thank you very much for showing us all around. Very welcome. Uh, some great information uh, Nigel's given us on metal detecting, and he's given us a very good deal on this new Garrett Sea Hunter Mark II. Right, we've got our first metal detector, and it is the Garrett Sea Hunter Mark II. It's a very popular underwater metal detector. So we've got a nice DVD there. Here's the warranty. It's warranty by Regton Metal Detection Specialists in Birmingham. Now it says here it's two year warranty, but if you read a bit closer it says that the Sea Hunter is only 12 month warranty. I suppose there's more risk of it getting damaged because it's an underwater machine. Sea Hunter 2, and it's all working and it's uh, comfortable to use, it looks really good actually. You can't yeah. wait to try it in the water. But also we've got this handy scoop they picked up. Yeah, and this is uh, about £44. Uh, plus about four pound shipping, so it's about just about fifty quid. Uh, it's stainless steel, TIG welded, absolutely fantastic item, really really well made, and it's perfect for us for lifting sand. So when we get a hit on the seabed, we can just scoop the sand up, and hopefully whatever's left in there will be uh, what we're after. Treasure, treasure, Dave. Yeah. So in this scene. You can see that I'm having trouble with my camera. I have a lot of trouble with my camera. Um, when you're under there and you think you've set it right, and then maybe you haven't set it right, but it's too late then, you're already down. So uh, you have to get your buddy to have a look at it, see whether it's on and all that kind of stuff. Now the next bit coming up, that's really interesting. We were down and we had this noise, this noise of an engine. We both realized there was a boat going over the top of us. Now we've got SMBs up, and we've also got a rib on the surface with our flags out saying diver down. And we've got a boat going over the top of us. 
It gets a little worrying. You can even see the shadow of the boat going over top of us. You can see us, uh, we both signal to each other that there's an issue uh, and there's danger. Uh, we both know exactly what each other's talking about and we both say stay down, keep down, keep low uh, until it passes over. Both agree that we're going to surface and we both do 360 checks as we go up uh, so that each of us is looking in a different direction when we go up. start selling things, big things. Now this is my pride and joy, an original 1978 Space Invaders arcade machine, similar to the one I played on as a youngster, when 10 pence meant 10 minutes of awesome killing aliens. Anyway, I managed to save up and buy one of these. It's a collector's item. But it's got to go. We need a Boat. We need a decent boat. Got to get a decent dive boat to be able to get out there on the on the site on the wreck site because it's quite rough that sea out there. Got to have a proper boat that's going to look after us. So uh, yeah, here we go. I've got a guy coming. Well, I've got a guy coming to view it in about an hour. So uh, hopefully he's going to buy it. Well, as you can see by the space left in the corner of my lounge, no more space invaders. Well, it's all for a good cause. Hurts that does when you do that. You got a sharp bloody beak, little monster. Ow! Stop it! Ow! 